Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have three crock pot meals. They are all easy and affordable. They are keto friendly, but most importantly, family friendly. They're very easy. They're basically a dump and go, and you could just throw them all in the crock pot and go about your day. So let me go ahead and show you what I came up with. All right, so crock pot meal number one is going to be chicken. It's actually jalapeno popper chicken. Very, very good. I know you guys will absolutely love this, but I want to tell you a couple things that I did to not make it, you know how sometimes when you make chicken in the crock pot, it can get real like sloppy and like dumpy and mushy. So what I do is when I do my chicken, um, for this, when I'm seasoning it, I always make sure it is defrosted. Some of the types of my chicken I will cook frozen, but if I'm seasoning it, I will make sure it's defrosted. I cook it on high for four hours, okay? Um, you could do eight for low, uh, eight hours on low, but I don't like for my chicken to get mushy. Right here I have about two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. Another thing I do is I fry up my own bacon. You could use the prepackaged like bacon crumbles, but I feel like this gives it a little bit more of a like homemade feel and it's not as much of a, like a slop. Um, what, you know how sometimes crock pot meals become like a slop. This definitely gives it a little bit more. And I just don't like eating those breadcrumbs. So if you like want to, um, a lot of people bulk cook bacon on Sundays for like meal prep, you can do that. I just do it in a pan while I was eating my breakfast and you know, this is about um, four and a half pieces of bacon, and I just roughly cut it. I shred my own cheese, that's another thing. Um, just because I am keto, so I try to, you know, stay away from those sneaky carbs. And this is about um, three-fourths of a cup of shredded, sharp shredded cheese. And then these are some fresh jalapenos that I slice. These are about three of them. Um, I don't go all the way to the stem because usually where the stem is is where it's the most hot. You could use, like, canned jalapenos if you wanted, but again... Um, just to give it a little bit more of a homemade feel. I have a brick of softened cream cheese. Soften it because if you don't soften it, it like some, even when you cook it, it doesn't melt all the way through and you'll get little chunks of cream cheese. And then instead of using a taco seasoning, I use a sasson. Guys, if you do not use sasson, you need to. I will link it down below. Try it, I promise you. Use these in your soups, use it on top of your meats. Um, it's complete alternative to um, taco seasoning, no carbs, okay? Um, you can use, I think it's like a teaspoon um, of this taco seasoning. I'm gonna use about three packets. So I'm gonna season the chicken breast with a packet of sasson first, and then um, we'll add everything in. This is literally just gonna be dropping it in and walking away, so let's get it together. Are too big. Can I get some comfort, please? I guess I should have been honest. I break to my heart. It's weighing me down, baby. I'm like a river that's overflowed. The sooner you know it, the less do we hurt. Let me speak the truth. Here is um, the chicken. It kind of is like a queso, jalapeno popper type thing. You can eat this like a soup, or you can eat this as, you know, obviously like this with the chicken on it. I just went ahead and cut everything up so um, each person would get something, um, like a big chunk of chicken. So this is going to be enough for me, my kids, Leo, and then Leo takes them for work. For the other kids, I'm probably going to put this over a bed of rice just so they can have like a queso mix with it. It's very, very good, super flavorful. Don't worry about the jalapenos, they did not give it too much of a spice. Like when I was telling my mom what I was making for dinner, she's like, oh my God, that's gonna be spicy. It's so good. So this is literally like a chicken queso. So I'm gonna eat it, like I said, just like a soup with a couple chunks of chicken. This is about seven servings. So I went ahead and created the recipe and it's really good. I prefer my chicken to be like this, to be in chunks to where you can see it. Um, we don't like for it to be like a mushy, like sloppy mess. Um, you know how sometimes chicken, you can kind of overcook it and it becomes mush. We like for it to still have, you know, chunks in it. So have, you know, it's still, it's fully cooked obviously, but it has, you know, some formation left. So I don't like for it to be like overcooked. 
and then you could see the big chunks of um, jalapeno and bacon it's very very good so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna plate this up or I'm gonna bowl it up and then I will show you what my meal looks like okay so here is how it all looks like a little like chicken queso soup like I said I served mine this way because I wanted like some of the broth but in here we can go ahead and just take some you know of the meat and then put it over a rice for the family that's another option but like i don't want rice so <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and eat it with a little bit of the broth but yeah so look at how good i just again want to show you um the seasoning is awesome with the sazon and it's really good so you could also serve it over cauliflower rice that's an option or you can eat it with like um some taco shells if you have those as well but all right that's crock pot meal number one and it's fire our next easy crock pot meal or dump and go meal is going to be a broccoli cheddar soup delicious low carb and easy okay um, we are going to go ahead and use frozen broccoli feel free to add fresh broccoli if you choose we're using frozen broccoli so this is going to take about an hour maybe an hour and a half to cook everything down okay if you're using fresh broccoli it would probably take about three hours in the crock pot okay so what i have here is just a bag of um broccoli obviously um i have two tablespoons of softened butter this is the carries butter um not the sticks but the one in the um, like plastic container um, this is a half a cup of shredded cheddar, white white cheddar, and then the extra sharp cheddar. Um, a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. This is a full brick of room temperature cream cheese. I go ahead and just take it out a little bit before, um, like maybe an hour before I'm going to start cooking. So I have that. We're going to have a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. One cup of, or two cups of water. And then right here on the stove top, I have two cups of chicken stock warmed. You can use chicken broth, but I went ahead and used chicken stock because it did not have any carbs in it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put everything in um, the pan and then I'll show you how it all comes out. Okay. Okay. So first I'm going to add my warm liquid, the chicken stock. I'm going to add Parmesan cheese. I'm just going to dump everything in here. My butter. my room temperature cream cheese. Half a cup of heavy cream. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna mix everything in. Okay, now that it's all mixed down, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of thyme. So just a little bit of thyme in there for seasoning. And then you're gonna go ahead and add your broccoli as well. So I'm gonna do probably a little bit more than half this bag. So I uh, remember that this is going to be a thick soup and since these are frozen, they are going to let off some water. Okay guys. So just remember that I put the lid on. We're going to turn the timer or the, um, the setting on high for about an hour and a half. Once this is cooked down, um, you're going to go ahead and that's when you're going to add in your cheese. You're going to stir that cheese in. So this cheese is just going to be sitting on reserve until it's cooked. Um, if you feel that this is too thick, then we could always add a little bit more water to thin it out. At this point, I figured out I forgot to add the water, so I did add that in, guys, just so you know. Very simple meal, and this can go a long way. You can do soup and sandwiches. I'm just gonna have soup, but um, it's very hearty as well. If you guys like it to have a little bit more broccoli, you could always do that. But my kids love it. They're big Panera Bread fans, and this is pretty much the closest recipe I've, I've tried that has it in there. And I really think it's that Parmesan that makes a difference in a little bit of time. But okay, we're gonna let this cook, and I will check with you guys in a little bit. It's been cooking for about an hour and a half, so the cheese is still all melting, the cream cheese and stuff, but I'm gonna go ahead and here is where we're gonna add that shredded cheese and we're gonna stir it all in and then we're gonna let it cook for about another half an hour. I added the shredded cheese and it's not as orange as you would see because I did add in the white sharp cheddar. I just, and I used this little like hand mixer to go ahead and make sure it was really um, melted in because sometimes I feel like with these kinds of soups that they just kind of clump together. So I just went ahead. I hate that I say that so often, I'm working on it. 
and I just mix everything together. And now I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit longer and we will check on it then. And for our third crock pot meal, we are going to do the traditional, everybody does it, Mississippi pot roast. It is a family favorite. It's very, very good and is that complete definition of a dump and go. So I do my meat a little bit differently, but I go ahead and use these whole beef shanks um, that have the little bone in it. Inside the bone, they have the marrow. Leo loves this, and they're actually a lot cheaper, guys, than getting um, like roasts and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss those in there. There's almost six pounds, five and a half pounds of these. I'm um, gonna use some pepperoncinis. I use probably about like seven or eight of them, and then I dump a little bit of the juice in there just to give it a little extra kick. And then I'm gonna use two packets of ranch and two packets of the powdered gravy mix. I always get these at Aldi. They're only like 50 cents each, so they're really affordable. And then Aldi came out with their own version of like Kiri's butter. So it's called the Pure Irish Butter with, you know, grass fed cows. Um, guys, this was only like $1.98. So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, eight tablespoons of butter to the um, crock pot because you need a whole stick of butter. So that's eight, uh, eight tablespoons. So I'm going to go ahead and put all that in here and then I'll show you it when it is all done. And yeah, so very, very easy. So I have the uh, the beef shank right here. I let it defrost overnight in the sink. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop them in there. They're still a little frozen. Don't worry about that. That's not because they're gonna cook for you know eight ten hours. Um, with this kind of meat, you definitely gonna want it to cook you know a long time so if you're gonna go ahead and go to work today um you know i would put it on you know right when you wake up right when you make your coffee and then uh throw it on because you want these this meat to be real tender and the longer like low and slow would definitely give it that real tender flavor so we're gonna add the um all the little packets i just like to make sure that all the meat is covered because it is kind of stacked in there so I'll just go ahead and pick up these guys here and then sprinkle it make sure everybody's nice and coated if you never made this before it's very very good you can make it with chicken as well We have a busy day, so this is gonna hit the spot for us. You know what, I think these two are gonna be good. I was gonna add four, but I think I'm only gonna add two because it really did coat these. So I think, yeah, we'll just do two of the packets, which is nice. Here is that eight ounces of butter. Toss that in there. And then remember I told you to take a little splash of the pepperoncini juice there. Give it a little something. That's my little secret there. So now you guys are in the club. And then I'm gonna drop my pepperoncinis. I love pepperoncinis. I eat them as a snack. If you guys only wanted to do not as much as me, then you don't have to, but they don't make it spicy. They just give it a really nice flavor. And this is a lot of meat in here, so. Right. Put it on low for, it currently is 6.30 in the morning, so it should be done, I'm hoping about 4.30 this evening. We'll check it and make sure the meat is shreddable. And I'll bring you guys back so we can check it together. But that's it, this is legit definition of dump and go. So breakfast, our dinner is on and we can go about our day. It's about eight hours later and this is what our roasts, our beef shanks are looking like. 
so you can see it just comes right off the bone. And that's how we want it, just to come right off the bone. So you see. I'm gonna go ahead and break it off the bone and kind of mix it up in all this gravy because this sauce is gonna be our gravy, okay? And I am going to serve this on top of some rice cauliflower and then I will spoon out the gravy, the sauce that's left, and sprinkle it over the top of the rice. But guys, remember, they do have marrow in here and these little bones, Leo loves that. It has a lot more flavor. So, but yeah. All we did was just dump it all in here and we have this beautiful roast dinner. This will be great for Sundays if you just wanna relax and do your thing and just lay on the couch and maybe watch some Lifetime, whatever. Football, I guess, that'll be cool too. Just throw this in here and there you go. Serve it with some homemade mashed potatoes or even the ones in the box. Or you can do rice cauliflower if you're keto like me. You can do this any which way. You don't have to be keto to enjoy this meal, but you could also feed this to your family, stay on plan, and still eat good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit, and then we'll make the cauliflower, and I'll show you everything all plated up. Okay, so this is how I plated up Leo's. I put his in a glass bowl just so people wouldn't ask me about my paper plates, but everybody else is eating them but so on the bottom right here is just about a half a cup of cauliflower rice and then I ladled out some of the gravy and then just tops it with the meat and that's how we are going to eat it I also bought um let me show you how I did my kids because they don't like cauliflower rice Benny no so for my daughters I went ahead and bought some uh fresh french bread from the local market with from the deli and I just cut it up and then they're having just the bread in like a little bowl and then they dip it in there. So you could also do that for those who um, aren't low carb and you could also top it on mashed potatoes. My kids don't like mashed potatoes either. They're like the weirdest. But yeah, this is definitely um, the options that you have to go ahead and make these meals. Like I said guys, I do follow keto and I still cook these things for my family. They do fit the keto lifestyle, low carb lifestyle, but they're also very family friendly, very, very easy. And yeah, they're just easy, good, and low carb. So if you guys like these types of things, these types of videos, please make sure to subscribe and to give this video a thumbs up. All right, thanks guys. Start to be. Can I get some comfort, please? I guess I should have been honest. I break to my heart. It's raining down, babe.